Hello Macquarie, welcome to Church Online. Thanks so much for joining us. If you are new or tuning in for the first time, my prayer for you is that you would taste and see that the Lord is good. We've got an action-packed service for our Vision Sunday. So join with me as I pray. Holy Spirit, right now, we ask for strength for the church across our nation. That not just Macquarie, but churches across our nation of Australia would feel the spirit of unity, that you would create uh, this lean in spirit. We also pray for the people of our community here in Newcastle, that they would be open, that there would be this spiritual awakening and openness that would happen in our area. In your mighty name, amen. Today on Vision Sunday, we gather as the church on the country of the Awabakal people, the traditional custodians who lived on this land. We pay our respect to their elders past, present and future. And we pray that together we can build his church and that his kingdom would come, his will be done in this great nation. You'll be hearing from Roz in Mindy, uh, as they bring fresh vision for our house. You will find the Holy Spirit nudge you with certain aspects of this year's vision. So open your heart as we now go into a time of worship. church you are and uh, just want to give you a quick update on the Zares Christmas and New Year haven't really talked to you much since then um, I got COVID on Boxing Day after giving it to half my family it wiped me out for a week all of those of you who had COVID and just had a tickle in your throat I'm trying to like you but I don't really I got scammed once really once and a half I made my own granola 
and I read this great big book by a Canadian doctor on how toxic emotions, trauma and stress affect your body. I tried to pass on a few hints to Mark where I thought he needed some healing. That didn't go very well. I got really stressed and I had to reread the book. <laughs> so I am inoculated against COVID. I'm healed from trauma, Mother Earth making my own granola and I'm ready for 2023. <laughs> how was your new year? <laughs> Um, okay, a recap of the last couple of years so that you have context for vision. The beginning of 2021, Mark felt his time leading Macquarie had finished. He passed the baton onto me, commissioning me to transition the church leadership to the next generation. After a few failed attempts trying to find the right couple, uh, God miraculously provided two mentors to walk the journey with us, John and Jossie, who have helped mega churches transition. Uh, we have been humbled by their generosity, their wisdom and their input and they are going to be with us on Sunday the 26th of February. So I want you to put that date in your diary. Jossie ha runs a global missionary um, organisation. They've planted 45,000 churches. His goal is 100,000 churches. This guy's got a spirit that has really affected me and I really want you to hear from him that weekend. All right, so we are not doing, we decided not to do a drop and run succession. We decided to do a legacy model, which means Mark and I can stay in the church and annoy you all for years. Uh, now we're going to stay on as founding pastors, not interfering, but mentoring and cheering on the next generation. We are transitioning to a team, which has some, been something in my spirit for years. I will work with the team for a year and gradually change the model from a senior pastor to a senior leadership team. This year will look like the part of the relay race where they exchange the baton, all you runners. It's called the changeover box. I will be holding the baton as the team run next to me. Then we will hold the baton together and I will, and then I will give them a, the baton and they will run along, and I will run alongside as they hold the baton. Then I will have a holiday. Interestingly, the 400 relay race is faster than the individual 400 race because it's all about team. But the relay race is won and lost in the changeover box. So that's why we're taking our time, uh, being thorough in our communication and preparation. So pray for us this year. A team model is less hierarchy, more collaborative and less celebrity pastor approach. Our model is changing, but our mission is not. The model can change, but the mission doesn't. Uh, the Old Testament model of transition, the prophet would come and anoint someone and they would be the leader and the king. However, Jesus didn't do it like this. He tapped 12 on the shoulder and spent the next three years pouring into them. And he actually didn't anoint a leader. He let the team work it out. The team is the New Testament pot model. In Ephesians 4, it says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip us for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In the New Testament, the fivefold apostolic team equipped the people to do the work of the ministry. In the Western Church, it's been a different model. It's been the pastors doing the work of the ministry. But Christ never intended his church to be like that. Christ doesn't want a spectator, consumer church. He wants a church where you're all called. We are all called. And I know deep in your heart, you want to see a move of God. I want to see a move of God. I want the sons and daughters to, in the house. And I feel that will only happen with this, with all the people, with all of us carrying the mantle and your mission for God. That's what he wants for his church. The senior leadership team will go on to birth discipleship teams, strategy teams, apostolic teams, teaching teams, and more leadership teams. This is just the first team that I'm going to introduce you today. It's all about multi multiplication, teams, birthing teams, birthing teams, because the more containers, the more capacity. 
and a team model creates greater capacity. And the more containers we have, the more God can fill. The limitation is not with God. It's never been with God. It's with us. We grow capacity by adding leaders, by adding containers. There is room for all of you in this model. The team will have an apostolic leader or executive leader, and they will lead the team, and the team will lead the church. And right now, I'm going to ask Mark to get my water, and I'm going to ask the team to come up. Come on, team. Here are the Motley crew. We have been working with them the last eight months. That's why I've looked so stressed the last eight months. They are not perfect. We tried we try to find someone perfect, but guess what? We couldn't find them. Um, but I believe they're chosen by God, chosen by the church board and backed by the senior elders to lead us into the future. I didn't have a part in choosing Dan as he is my son, and I wanted to protect him and myself, so I left the room for that discussion. Some of the team will be full-time, some part-time, some paid, and some voluntary. This team covers the five-fold ministry. Jacques, Dissa, and Mindy are apostolic. Mindy has the teaching gift. Dan has the evangelistic gift. Brooke, Kat, and Dan are pastoral. Ben, Jacques, and Dissa are prophetic. However, they are much more than their fivefold giftings. They are leaders and visionaries called by God to build his church. They are humble, hungry, and teachable. The three things that you need in leaders. They all take initiative, they can carry weight, they hear from God, and they've all passed significant tests, seen and unseen. They're all prepared to drop their nets, sacrifice financially, or prepared to lay down their own agenda, their own dreams, submit to one another, one another to lead the vision and serve you. The team will hold mutual empowerment and mutual submission to one another. They have been with us for many years. They have our DNA. They are sons and daughters of the house. Mindy has been with us 28 years. Dan's been with us 33 years. The Cronyers, nine years. Brooke, 22 years. Nathan, 18 years. Ben Hoffman, 10 years. Between them, there's a combination of 120 years' experience in this church. They probably look stressed too. <laughs> Most of them have lived in other nations. London, Singapore, South Africa, Sri Lanka, which gives them a global perspective. They will build the local church with a global heart. You won't em emotionally connect to all these seven. You don't need to. But you will em emotionally connect to one or two. Because when you commit to a church, you've got to commit with your head and with your heart, which means emotionally connecting to the leader, a leader. And all the feelers said, Amen. Mindy will be the apostolic leader of the team. John, Jossie and Mark, who are all apostolic, apostolic recognises other apostolic gifting, along with the board, have chosen Mindy. The apostolic, like the Apostle Paul, doesn't need a strong hand. But if the team can't agree or if there is conflict or correction is needed, Mindy can do it. Mindy has a history of being able to bring order from chaos. She has demonstrated strong leadership. That's why she's worked with Mark and I. She's still got a bit to go. She has demonstrated strong leadership over the corporate creative and Mac care departments. She has huge capacity. In her 28 years of serving Mark and I, she has never had any hidden agenda. She has never sought the limelight or senior leadership. She has courageously spoken up with truth to Mark and I when needed. Every role and title she has held lightly, her preparation has been thorough. She is recognised by a national executive as the genius who has rewritten our national government's ACC curriculum. Uh, the annoying thing about Mindy is that also she's got nice hair and she can sing. But we won't mention that. 
All right. This year, uh, so I'm going to invite the elders and the board to come up, and I also want the partners to come up and stand behind uh, their partners. Come on, elders, up you come. We've got Shaz praying, we've got Phil anointing. Come on, listen, 10 o'clock people, you've got to be a bit faster than this. <laughs> We're at a schedule, aren't we, Mind? All right, I just want to say this. This year will be a year of grace. <laughs> grace for the team, grace amongst the team, and this will give them, I want to give them some wriggle room. So if any of them lose their peace as the year unfolds, they can step away. All right, Shaz has got a mic. Oh, wow. Well. I'm going to try not to cry, but I could not love this more. <laughs> it, and um, obviously it's not the first time a Motley Crue has been chosen. And um, <laughs> the other 12 changed the world. So no pressure, guys. <laughs> Let's pray, church. Wait, I want you to stand, church. Yeah. And reach your hand towards. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Father, you are the same God that made a shepherd boy courageous. And um, today we are standing on your faithfulness. God, I pray for this team, Lord. I pray that um, beyond the courage that they've already exhibited, God, that you give them godly wisdom in every decision they make, God, every step they take, God. I pray that when their legs get a bit wobbly, God, that you add courage, Lord, and that you... Um, I pray, and I pray for us as a church, God, that we get behind them, that they know that we've got their back, Lord. Pray that you um, encourage us to pray for them, to hold their hands up, God, and to just to seek your face in everything they do, God. And God, we thank you for this model, for this. We thank you for this new season, God, that you have entrusted a new model to us, God. It's a pioneer thing for the whole church, not just the team, Lord. And um, God, we just want to honour you, Lord for this, um, just for this new season, God, that you make a way, God, where it, it didn't look like there was for a while, Lord, and we just want to follow you wholeheartedly, pray for your grace on them, for your protection on them and their families, God, and for your provision along every step of the way, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Shaz. Thanks, team. I'm going to hand it to Mindy. Wow. Thanks for embracing us as we are. It's a journey of faith, isn't it? A journey of faith for all of you, and it's a journey of faith for us as well. And I actually do know that God has spoken to me about taking this on, so it gives me a lot of confidence and courage in the journey of faith. And I believe that behind the scenes somewhere, he has been forming me and preparing me in all the things that the church has trusted me to do. So that gives me confidence. Now God's just saying, you know what I've told you. So take courage and just go for it. So that's what we're all doing. And the team's doing the same thing as well. They love this church. They love the church. They love the kingdom of God. And we're going to follow where God is leading. And if you're wondering about all of our other great pastors, leaders and staff, they all hold their existing roles. They all do them really, really well. This is just another layer that we're adding to everything that we already have. So that's good. Now, my job here today is to talk to you about structure and governance and what it looks like. So we're going to look at some flow charts. The first one is our leadership structure. Um, because you can see that it's actually not just the leadership team. We Roz talked about doing church through teams. So it's actually the board, the leadership team and the elders doing this together. The leadership team are there to govern and protect you. The, uh, sorry, the board is there to govern and protect you. The leadership team are responsible for apostolic visions, spiritual and organisational leadership. And the elders are there for spiritual care. This gives us a really broad set of shoulders. Don't you have confidence in that line? So I want you to think about this leadership as a set of shoulders because we are the body of Christ and Jesus Christ is the head. So now we have the head, the shoulders, and you, the body. And if you have a broad set of shoulders, there's the potential for great strength, great strength to carry more. That's what we're going to do. All right, the next flow chart is accountability and protection. 
And you'll notice in this flowchart, I've only included the senior elders because they have some extra responsibilities. It's their responsibility to spiritually care for the board and the leadership team. But the other thing that's important for you to know is that the accountability structure will include the board electing the leadership team, the leadership team electing the elders, and the elders electing the board. So what this does is it gives us a beautiful balance for protection and accountability. No one person and no one team holds ultimate control on authority. We do this together. And we're writing this into our constitution. A lot of churches in this era are rewriting their constitutions. Some of them are making board-led constitutions. But it was important for us that we are an apostolic spirit-led church. So we've got the apostolic at the forefront. But written into our legal framework are those important spaces for the board and for the elders. So I want you to feel really confident about that. Okay, the next flowchart, it's time to zoom out. And I've actually moved the elders into the middle for this flowchart because it doesn't matter who's in the middle on these set of shoulders, which is great, because I want to show you the difference between the senior elders and our pastoral eldership team. The senior elders, you can see, look after the left and the right or the board and the leadership team, while the pastoral elders are there to care for all of you. All right, the final flowchart, the most exciting flowchart of all, is actually all of you that last layer in the flowchart. If you've ever wanted to be in a Macquarie Life Church flowchart, this is it. This is you. This is you in the flowchart. Um, because this whole restructure is to empower you. Ros already said from Ephesians 4 that Christ gave the fivefold to empower you for the works of service. So let's rethink all of these things as not flowcharts, but organizational go charts. That's what we're going to go for. And because I want you to know that you actually have the call of God in you and the church has a call, there's works for us to do. Whether you've known God one day, whether you feel like you've got the strength or the call, you've got to believe that you have. Even if you've known God for a lifetime, there is more for us to do and there are great things for the church to do. And our job as a leadership team is to empower you for the works of service. Are you ready for it? Come on, come on. All right, I want to do a prophetic picture just as I finish up. This is from John chapter 21, and it's the account of the miraculous catch of fish. The disciples were out fishing. They'd actually been fishing all night, and they hadn't caught anything. And Jesus comes along the shore and says, throw your net on the other side. And when they did, they hauled in fish so much so that they could barely actually haul it in. That's how big the catch of fish was. And so what I saw from this picture was they were in the same boat. They were in the same water. They had the same net. Jesus just walked beside them and said, it's time to do something different. And that's what we're doing as a team. It's the same church. We're in the same community. We have the same call and the same mission. Christ is just saying to us, it's time to do something different. And what's important for you to hear in that is the prophetic outworking of that miracle. This is what happened. First of all, we already heard there was a massive haul of fish, more than we could barely contain. So that is people coming into the kingdom of God, people being discipled to greater measure than ever. The works of Jesus Christ to care for the poor and the oppressed on the earth being outworked in us like they never have before. The second thing is, in verse 11, it actually specifically tells us that the nets didn't break. And what I want you to receive in that moment is God protected the net. And God is protecting us on this journey. So don't let fear set in. God has got this. He's going to protect the net. And the last thing is, Jesus sat down and had breakfast on the beach with his disciples. And what that says to me for us as a church is literally Jesus among us with us, feeding us, providing for us, and in really close communion. How beautiful is that? How beautiful. So what I'm asking you now is to steward what God is doing in your own spirit. And we're going to say yes. We're going to throw our net on the other side. We're not going to let fear step in because God has got this. And let's see what God will do. Good? All right. Thanks, Mind. Uh, if you've got any questions or concerns, next 
Sunday after the 8am. We're meeting downstairs for a morning tea and you can come along and Mindy will answer all your questions. Um, or alternatively, you can head to our website and there's you can put in some questions there. So we really don't want you to be in a vacuum. You've got any, the questions might sound dumb. That's all right. Just um, lean in, come to the morning tea, or go onto our, our website. Oh, Mark, can you pass up that bag? Um, so a couple of thoughts. Yeah, before I share a bit of the vision, I just want to let you know that our DNA is generational, and. Um, we are a multi-generational church. So I don't want to talk about that for a minute. Uh, the senior leadership team is made up of Gen Xs and Millennials, but the board and elders, if you hadn't noticed, have got a lot more years. And uh, we will continue to have uh, leaders from every generation. Now, I want to show you this. This is my year 10 folder. And uh, I don't know, see, I'm a recycle person. Uh, but all of this paper in here is the vision over the last 32 years. Now, the challenge for all of us, doesn't matter how old you are, is to not leave the vision and what you've got in your heart in a folder. I've nearly done all of that. There's only one thing left in that that's left in me, and that's mental health and probably some leadership development. But you don't want to die with the paper in the folder. Because um, the paper in the folder, the, the thought that I'll do it, actually never extends the kingdom. So I think there could be even some 85-year-olds here that still have dreams, like Caleb, who, wanted to, who crossed into the promised land. All right. So whatever is in you, get it out. Because I've got to tell you, life goes quickly. And don't be the person that dies with all the dreams still in their heart. Matthew 13, God gave me this scripture. Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings out his treasure, things that are new and fresh, and things that are old and familiar. And it was a reminder to me that a healthy church brings out new and fresh, and then we bring out Ralph. I mean, then we bring out old and familiar. Um, but actually does bring balance to our church. We sing a song from Elevation and then we sing Abide With Me. And uh, that's what our church will be. And speaking of the generations, I wa also want to say that we're in a process of planning and building a multi-purpose centre. It will be the current kids' church is, where the current kids' church is. We are currently working hard to get all the documentation finished with a view to calling tenders early March. If we get an acceptable tender, we should see work commencing mid-year. Um, I believe this building is a part of enlarging our footprint, of serving our community and leaving a legacy for the next generation. I believe it is a seed and harvest building. Perhaps some of those things in your heart might be fulfilled in that building. All right, now to vision and mission. Vision and mission keeps going. It doesn't matter that we're in transition or in the new season. Actually, churches are always in transition. Vision and mission keeps going. The vision is where we are going. The mission is what we are doing to get there. Our vision is towards Christ. It's based on the scripture in Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. These are his last words to his disciples. And, sh is, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Our vision matches what Christ asked his church to do. Uh, and we're putting it in the wording of towards Christ. Our vision is towards Christ. Our mission is how we do it. Our mission has two parts, what we do individually and what we do corporately. In the next two weeks in our Mission Sunday, we'll be talking about what we do corporately. Macquarie's focus and strategy of going towards Christ has three components. Look up, lean in, and reach out. Jesus lived his life focusing on these three aspects, looking up to his father, leaning into his closest friends, and reaching out 
to a broken and lost world. These three components are also found in the two greatest commandments. Matthew 22, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. So look up. Look Up has two components. It has an individual component and a corporate component. We encourage you always to be looking up and always to keeping your eyes on Christ because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. And we want you to stay encouraged. But we also have a corporate look up, which is right now, which is what we do, did when we prayed, which is what we did when we worship, when we watch we, what we're doing when we come around the word of God. Our corporate look up is whenever you meet with two or three are gathered together, you are looking up. And that's why I say to you, when you come to this house, bring your faith. Because if we all bring our faith with a corporate look up, God responds to faith and moves. All right, lean in. Our discipleship strategy also includes a lean in component. Jesus could have lent into his father, but not lent into, into the people. He could have said, God, I'm leaning into you, but I don't really like these disciples. I don't really like the people. I don't really like the 70, but he didn't. He lent in to us. Um, many people think spiritual growth is a private matter, but God calls believers to live out their faith in community. You can't develop a deep faith in isolation. Belonging to a faith community identifies you as a genuine believer. Ephesians 2 says this, you are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other believer. Interestingly, last night I listened to a podcast by this agnostic girl. She's being interviewed, and the guy asked her about faith, and she said this. She said, I want to have a faith. I want to have a faith. And she said, this is what I notice. She said, Christians need to have a social faith. That's what she called it, a social faith. She said, I watch them going to church and I see that their faith is social and it has impressed her. So you know, people out there are watching us do faith in community. Um, when we come together as a church from different backgrounds, we are witnesses to the world. Jesus said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And I want to commend the young families. If you're a couple of the young families here, I want to commend you. I know it's not easy. You arrive with a tantruming toddler with vomit on your sleeve and only three hours sleep. And the iPad's broken down on the sign-in queue. Um, but I want to say this. You are not just coming to church. Nikki and George, you sometimes think, is this worth it? But you are never just coming to church. You are positioning yourself for the prophetic future of your family, that they will stand on your shoulders. So never think, I am just coming to church. No, you are not coming to church. You are positioning yourself right in the center of where God wants you and what he has for you and your family. So well done, young families. In our leaning component, I encourage you to join a life group, find a place to serve, grow, or um, find a group to belong to. I asked Levi Field, one of our young guys, what the difference life groups has made in his life. He said this, life groups have been a huge benefit to my life, connecting with guys from my generation who share similar goals and ideas is a blessing. Leading a life group, I get a chance to share with other things I've learned in my life, as well as hear their stories too. Isn't it great that our young people are in strong life groups? He was in a life group and now he's leading one. Go, Levi. So you can go onto our website. If God's nudging you with more lean in, go onto our website. There's a life group page. You might want to lead a life group. Um, can be a social life group, a spiritual life group, one of our quipping groups. Um, you can go onto quick links and find a place to serve, or you can grab one of these and fill them out. It's got a QR code. You can go onto our website and um, need more information about serving. All right, our last component is reach out, living out Christ's words of go. Go into all the world. His last statement on earth started with these words. He didn't say, and don't forget, close the door, stay inside, drink hot chocolate. 
He said, go. The whole thing started with a go. The father reached out to the world and sent his son, Jesus, you got to go. And then when Jesus left here, who came? The Holy Spirit. Hey, Holy Spirit, you've got to go. Um, as the Father sent me, Jesus said, so I am sending you. And that is the spirit in you. You have a go spirit. doesn't matter if you're an introvert or you don't think you've only got any gifts or you don't like people. You have got a go spirit in you because the Holy Spirit is a goer. Um, you were created to reach out. It can be a small reach out to a work colleague or a big reach out to another nation. But every reach out counts. And that's why the enemy resists reaching out and go. He doesn't mind us having hot chocolates. But he doesn't want us to go. In Mark 16, it says this. Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. And the next two weeks, we're going to be looking at our reach out corporate um, mission. The word I got for this year is guess. Go. One syllable. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, 32 years ago, Mark and I left the Central Coast and were called to Cardiff AOG. So it started with a go. And at the end of this year, I will also go. And if there is one theme that burns in my heart, is go. I didn't want to go to Newcastle, but I discovered that God doesn't really care where I wanted to go. You know, Mark and I still now and again say, if God wants to send us to Moree, I don't know why we picked Moree. Um, don't tell the people of Moree. Um, we would go. I like comfort. I like to, to settle. But comfort doesn't lead to a harvest and fruitfulness. That go we followed 32 years ago transformed my life transformed my family and actually transformed this church. In Matthew 9, 38, Jesus encourages people to go out into the harvest. He said, send people out into the harvest. The harvest is white. He's saying the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ready. I know you don't think it is, but that's what Jesus said. He said, it is ready. You know, um, and there is a harvest on the other side of your go. In my early 30s, when we came up here, I started a bus ministry for the kids. And every Sunday, we'd take a bus out and we'd pick up the kids. And every second Friday, we would visit all the kids that came on the bus. We would go to the Housing Commission, to the kids, to their families, and we'd knock on the door and say, this week, kids, we've got hot dogs or whatever, donuts. It was always to do with food, which worked brilliantly. Um, but, you know, I planted. I threw thousands of seeds doing that ministry. But you know, I look today and Scott Warren, who's up the back, is part of the harvest of that go. And if you don't go, I've got to tell you, there will be no harvest. Now, I know right now some of you are freaking out and thinking you're going to a different church. Um, but I don't want you to do that. I'm not asking you to go to the Housing Commission or start a bus ministry. Your go looks different. And we're going to unpack it. But I've just got four things quickly to tell you. that you, Because I want you to believe you can do it. That's one of the biggest blockages. You think you can't do it. You can do it. Here's four simple things. You can find out what your gifting is. In reaching others what's your gifting you can practice and you can you're able to tell your story and what God has done for you in one minute that's what we're going to be doing this year things like this you can step over the line of fear that keeps you in your comfort zone even if you only do it four times this year you can do it and we're going to be encouraging each other when we step over that line of fear you can grab a photo of people who aren't in the kingdom and put it in your Bible and pray for them regularly because they need prayer. Prayer softens people's hearts so they're ready to receive the gospel. And you can get involved in our Easter dinner parties that's coming up this term and show hospitality to someone. You can do that. Can you do three things on that list? Can you? Yeah, turn to the person next to say, Bleh. <laughs> It's very hard for Rosé to get all the words out. 
Turn to the person next to you and say, you can do this. Simple how-tos. We're going to finish with a little story. I want the musos to come up. I want to take you to a story in Genesis 11. Holy Spirit, speak to us. It says this, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, and Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out to Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they never got to Canaan. When they got to Haran, they settled there. Who loves settling? Terah dies. And then the Lord says to Abram, Abram, I want you to move. I want you to go. I'm sending you out to leave this land, to leave Haran, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. He gives him a promise of making him a great nation, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and it says they arrived there. I want to say this. You all have a Haran, and you all have a Canaan. You all have something that you need to leave behind, a comfort zone, and God has a Canaan, a promised land for each of you. It might not be a physical Haran. Usually in in our life, there's only one or two leaves to a physical place. But it could be a drop the net and follow me. It could be that season has finished. It could be leave those idols or the sin or the bitterness or the mindset. Perhaps it's the sin of you can't, perhaps it's the mindset of you can't that you need to leave behind. Perhaps it's the mindset of nothing will ever change. I'm stuck that you need to leave behind. You might say, Roz, I don't know what the future, what my Canaan is. Abraham didn't either. Our church doesn't either. We're leaving behind Haran, the comfort, and we're going into a future. But I know that when you get the God go, that there is a promise and he has an inheritance for you on the other side. And if we want to see the church become who she is, this is what we're doing corporately. As a church, we are getting out of our comfort zone and moving into the unknown. But he gave me the word go. It's a prophetic word. So I know it's prophetic for each of you. And God has a go for you. And interestingly, in Genesis 15, 7, God changes the language. He says to Abram, actually, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur to give you this land to possess. God, we don't leave Haran. God brings us out of Haran so we can possess the land that he has for us. We're gonna, they're gonna, Muzos are going to sing a song about re-surrendering And uh, I just want you to sit there and consider and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I surrender to the wind of your spirit with my heart in my hands I'm surrendered to the wind of your spirit with my heart in my hands I'm surrendered to the wind of your spirit with my heart in my hands I'm yours
part in the scripture where Mo, God's ticked off with Moses and his people and he said, Moses, you just go ahead. I'm not coming with you anymore. And Moses wrestles with God and said, no, I cannot go without your presence. If your presence doesn't go, I'm not going. The cloud is moving, so I want you to stand. You know, you might also sense that God is asking you this morning to let go of something specific, to leave a harem, to step out in faith and step into your future to possess what God's got for you. And if right now you can articulate that harem, we're going to sing this beautiful song, I Stand, and I want you to come out the front because it requires a response. Now, let me tell you, if you can't walk out the front, <laughs> are you going to leave the Central Coast? <laughs> are you going to wake up tomorrow morning and think, I'm going to get fit? I'm going to heal? So we're going to sing this song. And if you know your Haran, you don't know, need to know your Canaan. If you know your Haran, what you've got to leave, I want you to come out the front. And the elders and the leadership team are going to anoint you with oil. They're not going to pray for you. They're going to anoint you with oil and say, we believe, we agree, and you are empowered to step into what God's got for you. And the rest of you, that's fine. I know God is doing different things. Just have your own God moment. While we sing this song, you stand there and have your own God moment. But if that's you and you can articulate your hair and you know God's speaking to you while the musos sing, while we all sing, come out the front. Thanks, team. Walk in a sea. Walk in a sea. I want the elders and the team to come to and get the oil. This Start anointing. We live to We're going to just have a kumbaya moment. I want you to hold the person's hand next to you. 
because you are a really brave church. You're a beautiful, brave church going on this journey together. And God has got a great future for this church. Father, I thank you. We see together. We bring our hearts together as faith as one. And Father, we want to be part of what you're doing across the earth. So prepare us, God. Open our hearts. I pray that we'll love one another. We'll forgive one another. This won't be a house of judgment. It'll be a house of grace. Father, grace for the prodigals. Grace for the ones that you want to draw into your kingdom. And Father, now we send each other out. Holy Spirit, send us out into the harvest field. God, in your last days, bring such a harvest, Father. Father, raise up the evangelists, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the pastors. Stir up our gifts, Father, that we can run our race, God, and our folders will be empty when we drop into that grave in Jesus' name. We all said... Wow, church, I hope you're feeling inspired to go, having a deeper sense of the Holy Spirit leading you into opportunities this year. You know, sometimes we need to let go of something in order to go. Two things that I have had to let go of in order to go has been fear and comfort. Fear of the unknown and what people think, and also comfort of my own world. Comfort of staying rather than going. And if that is you, if you need to let go of something in order to go, I want to pray for you right now. Jesus, I pray for confidence over these people, that in order to go, that you would give them confidence and give them wisdom into what to let go of. Give them a supernatural strength to be sensitive, but also just to be able to rise to the occasion, to feel confidence in their go. Amen. Also, if you would like to know more about Jesus and begin or recommit your life to him, let us know in the comments or get in contact with us through our website. This Wednesday, the 8th of Feb, the creative team launch is happening, 7 to 8.30 p.m. here at the church. It's open to anyone who would like to be part of the creative team. So this could be you. This could be your chance to dust off the vocal cords and guitar strings. We are running our Thrive course starting on February the 20th. It's a four-week program for all our new people and people who would like to know more about the DNA of Macquarie. Register online to join the Thrive course. I'm really excited about this next one. Missions Sunday. Mission Sunday is happening over the next two weeks. Yes, two weeks this year. So make sure you tune in to hear about our heartbeat for the nations and our local community. I even encourage you to start praying and getting a sense of a financial contribution to our missions this year that you want to make. Macquarie Women, you have your first event coming up this Friday called Sweet Sunsets. It's at Meriwether Surf House upstairs in the bar area. So please know it is an 18 plus event only. No need to RSVP, just rock up. That's it from me and our team. We are praying you have a blessed week and take the fragrance of the Holy Spirit with you into your world. Thank mm -hmm. you.